I am back at E-Trailer, and we have our towing expert, Laser, here. Great to see you again. Yes, and uh, now we're talking about different towing options. We've had some questions on social media about, you know, what are the different options available for different uh, weights of trailers, whether it's a travel trailer or fifth wheel. So where would we start? with that laser the starting point with travel trailers starting point is obviously gonna be your kitchen so this is what's attaching to your vehicle yeah. this is what everything else is going to attach to and hang off of so this is the current option right here we have a few different other options available they're all specific to vehicles so like you take it off one vehicle 90 percent of the time you can't put it on a different vehicle so we have on our website we call it our fit guide and you put your vehicle information in you click on hitches and it shows everyone that'll fit your vehicle so what these basically do is these bolt onto your frame and it allows you to put ball mount, which is the correct term. Everyone calls everything a hitch in the towing world. It gets a little confusing sometimes, but so this is actually your hitch. What's going in here is gonna be your ball mount and your ball. So your ball mount slides into this opening and your ball sits down here. So if you look at these guys over here, we've got a couple ball mount options. They're, we'll go over there in a second, but generally this is where you start for travel trailers. If you're going fifth wheel, you're starting with a fifth wheel hitch. There's a lot of options for fifth wheels. A lot of trucks are now coming with, call them pucks, and they come from the factory. And basically, none of these options do, but actually no, that one will. So if you look at the base of it, it's got little legs that you can lock into place, and it fits your truck without having to put any kind of like base rail like this in your truck. So it's a very convenient option. These are a little bit more specific to the trailer you're getting. Like a hitch like this, as long as it's basically your smaller vehicles are only going to be able to tow so much that you don't have a whole lot of options. With fifth wheels going into trucks, trucks have a lot of different weight range capacities. So you want to make sure, one, your truck can handle the trailer you're looking at, and two, the fifth wheel you're looking at can handle the trailer as well. Going a little over on one of these, perfectly fine. Just don't go under, because obviously you're underweight, you're limited by your yeah. capacity, and generally it's usually the hitch, so definitely make sure you're getting the right capacity on that. But other than that, make sure, like again, through our fit guide, if you're looking at fifth wheels to see if you have the factory puck system, a lot of different brands have ones where they sit right in, or we have an adapter that'll fit, so it'll, it'll walk into place without having to mess with it too much. We have a whole series of expert videos coming out with e-trailer, so make sure you smash that subscribe button so you catch all of our videos. So that's kind of where, at least with fifth wheels, once you have your pitch pretty much good, there is another wiring component that I tend to suggest with fifth wheels. If you look at a lot of fifth wheels, especially when you're looking at them down the road, they have the wire coming out of like their kingpin and it goes over the, their tailgate and then down into their plug by the bumper. I don't like that because you can kind of tear up your tailgate doing that. We have a lot of different options where you can actually mount a seven way inside your truck bed. So that way you don't have to drape it over your tailgate. You just plug it right in. It's, I think it's better. It's a cleaner look. You're not messing your truck up that way. Again, fit guys, click on our wiring. It shows all those and they're, they're a very good option. They're not necessarily needed, but it's something I always like to mention because if I prefer them. If I were doing that, that's what I would do. Other than that, fifth wheel is pretty straightforward. As long as you got your hitch and your wiring, you're good. If you're going with the travel trailer, once you have your hitch, you're not done yet. You still got a couple things to do. So if you want to come over here and look at these ball mounts. So these are going to be kind of your more premium options because they're adjustable. Some of them will have like little shocks in them to actually make it so it's a little less jarring when you're starting and stopping. This right here is gonna be your more standard one. Kurt has recently decided to start making something that actually has a little, I mean, jounce or shock in it, so that can actually move a little bit, so it lessens your jarring, but this is gonna be your standard ball mount. So this is what's gonna go inside your hitch, and then the coupler from your travel trailer is gonna basically lock onto this and be able to turn on it. So that's your, your system there. And of course, your safety chains that you always cross. That's pretty much it. Um, we do like to recommend locks instead of just your standard pin and clip. We all know there's a lot of unsavory people that like to just walk away your things and this kind of keeps people from walking away with your ball mount. But if you're out on the road, you leave your travel trailer somewhere, you go out to eat, someone walks away with your ball mount, you're gonna have to go buy another one and it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt. It's nice to have locks. The only other component, unless you're going with a heavier one, which I'll get into in a minute, if you're going with a fairly light travel trailer, you're just pulling something kind of a small trailer every now and then, 
the only other thing you're going to need is wiring, and there's two options for that. You're going to, well, there's more than two options, but two most common options. First one's going to be your four flat. So what that basically does is it just activates the lights on your trailer. It's not going to do any kind of brakes. It's not going to charge anything. It's just so when you're braking or you're turning, when your turn signal and your brake lights are on, they're going to be on in your trailer as well. The seven way, which is more if you're going to have a bigger trailer, if you're going to have more options in your trailer, like some kind of fridge or lights or something like that, like inside the trailer, I mean, the seven way is going to provide power for all that. It's going to have a charge line so you can charge things and it's going to have a line so you can uh, activate your brakes. If you have brakes in your trailer, you have to use them. I don't think that's in every state, but most states, and it's something if you got them, use them. And basically, you install a brake controller in your truck if you don't already have one. Some trucks do come integrated with them. We have a lot of options for brake controllers on there, a lot of actually really good options. And basically, all that's doing is it's got an inertial sensor inside it, and when you're slowing down, it's going to basically slide a pendulum so it'll brake the trailer as much as, it's brake, as you're braking in your truck. So it's going to be a very even braking experience. We do still carry some older design ones that were called time delayed. And basically when you hit your brake on one of those, it's got a timer in there and it basically amps up the brakes over time. People swear by them. They're, that's what they were using originally before they came out with the pendulum design. They work, they don't work well. They're less expensive. So a lot of people do grab them if they're not really needing it, but they do want to kind of use their brakes. I still say go with like a better option because we have some that are actually pretty inexpensive and they're going to do a significantly better job breaking. So if you have any questions, just call us on that. We can definitely get you good options for brake controllers. But my personal favorite is a red arc. This one right here. This is my favorite option. So basically it's still proportional. So it's got that pendulum in it. It's called proportional braking. What this thing is, is this is your box right here. So that's your main controller box. Again, with me being six foot five, I tend to have pretty limited leg room in vehicles, and I don't like the ones where you have to mount underneath because I'll smack my leg on it. Again, not everyone has that problem. But this is nice because this mounts underneath your dash kind of in a tucked away position, and the only thing that you're actually going to have on your dash is this knob. So this is how you adjust your settings to make it higher, harder, or weaker. It's your manual override, so all you do is press it. And that's all you see on there. So you're just got your brake pedal and a little knob. That's the one that I tend to suggest. And that's the one that I like if I was putting one in my truck, if I didn't already have one, that's what I would go with. And that could work with fifth wheels and goosenecks as well. That's not just for travel trailers. So that's, in my opinion, that's the best option that we carry right now. All right, so one of the things I mentioned when we were talking about ball mounts was weight distribution. So basically what these do is exactly what the name is. It distributes the weight of your travel trailer and so it's not just all on the ball. So what these are basically doing, so when you attach, this is a better one to look at, when you attach to the coupler, that's your one point when you just have a ball mount. So when you're using weight distribution systems, you're attached here, here, and here. So it's essentially, it's doing exactly what the name is. It's distributing the weight a little bit more evenly so it's not all just sitting right at one point. It moves your, your weight back a little bit. So it makes it, so one, you're not getting as much sag on the back of your truck, and it kind of it helps with handling for that lack of a better way to put it now weight distribution most of these do have kind of built-in sway control just with how they're designed there are other options to add more sway control so with this one specifically the reese ones they have little basically they're brake pads in here and when these bars slide it's going to keep it from sliding quickly so it kind of keeps it so you're not just moving around real quickly it'll slow it down a little bit there's some other options. Basically what they're doing is they want to keep your trailer as straight as possible. They don't want you to turn. So they'll, we've actually done a couple of tests with them and you can feel like when you go around and turn with that one, you can feel the back end kind of moving around. When you put one of these on there, you feel it for a second and then it just straightens back out. So the sway control is extremely important, especially if you have a heavier trailer. And again, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. There's the old style where they have like a brake pad basically right here that you have to bolt onto your trailer. You have to disconnect it every time you go to back up. They work, a bit of a pain in the butt. They're extremely loud. They're supposed to be loud. That means it's working, don't boil it. <coughs> but most of these are gonna help that anyway. Some of them do have more advanced, for lack of a better way to put it, sway control options. 
The equalizers, we don't have an option out here to show you, but the equalizers are similar to this. They're, they're my go-to. They're less expensive than a lot of options, and they do an extremely good job. But yeah, if you got a heavier trailer, get sway control. You'll you'll be happy you did. You'll be very happy you did. And again, with these, don't get the heaviest option you can. It's not bigger is better in this case. You want your tongue weight to be in the middle of your weight distributions, or as close to the middle of the weight distributions capacity as possible. So if you've got a 400 pound tongue weight, look for a system that's gonna go from 200 pounds to 600 pounds. So that way you're right in the middle, you're gonna get the best ride you can. If it's too much, it'll lift the front of your trailer up, you're gonna have even more sway issues. If it's not enough, it's basically just not gonna do anything. Shoot for the middle, you're good to go. So would you ever recommend a gooseneck uh, to add? Good question. So that's actually something that's becoming more common because with the fifth wheels, they take up a lot of your bed. They're heavy. They're not easy to move. Goosenecks are a lot easier to, they're a little bit more difficult to hook up to because you do just have the one ball there. But once you're hooked up, that's it. You put your safety cheeks on, you're hooked up, you're good. What's really nice about it is when you want to tow or put something else in your bed, like say plywood, then why you want to sit flat? There's usually, I forget exactly how this one comes out, it's probably a lever right here, but you pull a lever or there's a little piece on top of the ball that you pull up, you can pull the ball out, either they can sit inside upside down so it's completely flat or you can just stow it in your cab. But now you have a completely flat bed, so you can put whatever you want in there, you don't have to mess with a 300 pound fifth wheel, because some of those really do weigh 300 pounds, they're heavy. It's something a lot of people are going to for that reason. And they do pivot really nicely. And a lot of the ones that are specific gooseneck trailers that aren't switching to like a fifth wheel to gooseneck option, they're very tapered in the front. So you don't really have to worry about making connection to the cab of your vehicle and really screwing something up. Because you see that pretty often and that's an expensive fix. The gooseneck specific trailers, generally you can do it short bed, long bed. 90% of the time it doesn't matter. You can make your turns, you're good to go. The fifth wheels are a little bit more tricky. If you got a long bed, you're fine. Short beds, you definitely want to consider a slider. So that way you can slide it back, make your turn, and then slide it back when you're done with your turn. But again, a lot of the trailers nowadays are having those tapered front ends so you can kind of get away with not always having to have a slider. But again, we also have that formula on our website so you can decide if you need it or not. But goosenecks are definitely getting more popular for the reason of having the clean, clear truck bed. And any mistakes that people make with uh, goose box? Safety chains. Okay. Because people assume, <laughs> like, since they're switching from a fifth wheel to just the gooseneck ball, since they still have, like, the big old pin box, like, oh, I don't need safety chains. I'll be good. You need safety chains. Okay. They're there for a reason. So if that ever does, like, if you forget to lash it or something, if it ever comes off, and if you don't have safety chains on there, you have completely destroyed your truck and camper, most likely. So you, you don't have to cross the chains on a gooseneck, but you definitely want safety chains. Wow, just a wealth of information about towing and towing options and how to do it safely. Uh, thanks again, no Razor and E-Trailer. Uh, you guys are available for uh, chat, uh, phone calls, and email, email yeah. uh, because you know this area confuses me like I think it confuses a lot of you. A lot of people. And you want to get it right. You don't want to spend too much money, but you want to spend the right amount of money for the right product. And you guys can help figure that out Absolutely. because, yeah, this is important for your safety and everybody else on the road to get this right. Yeah, and it uh, gives you a better towing experience, so you have a better time. Right, exactly. And you know, the roads are pretty rough out there. Yes, they are. So uh, this is going to help make that more enjoyable. And uh, for more videos like this, you can click right over here.